If Murray had supported the show, I'd be less sick of podcasts. Yeah, there goes. The blubbity blah. The blubbity blah. Sending out good vibes. The blubbity blah. Good vibes. The blah. Good vibes. The blubbity blah. Good vibes. Good vibes. Underneath breaths of deep gratitude and prayers for guidance and protection. And put on a didgeridoo and shamanic drumming track. Shivers or vibrations and stuff like that. Okay, guys, welcome back to the Grammarica Show. Coming at you this week with John Kerwin, uh, the conspiracy theorist survival guide or something like that. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So John came out of the blue. Uh, I think he had found, I, don't, I think he found us and emailed me and we had him on the show and it was fantastic. I mean, it really was. I mean, he's really well spoken on all of it. And we had a great chat for for a little over an hour. We're gonna have him back on the uh, on the Outlawed show so we can get a little more a little more risque. And if you guys want to skip ahead of our lazy rounds, there's a timestamp in the show notes, and uh, you can just jump right into the interview with John. Of course, we got everybody's favorite Saskatchewaner, Graham Saska Saskawatch. Spelled yeah. that wrong on the shirt way back when. Saskatchewan. That was like some premonition of you moving to Saskatchewan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's weird. How's it feel to be a not in Alberta? Uh, it's pretty weird, actually. Yeah, I bet. You even have a weird number. Yeah, it's a, uh, but I don't know. You'll settle in. Yeah. Try, it's, getting, it's hard to settle. It's getting hard to settle in right now. So. Well, hopefully it gets better. Of course, we come back to Alberta soon. Yep. A few weeks. For the big contact at the chalet. It's going to be an event. The grizzly bears are fucking popping off right now. I hope it keeps up. I mean, there's a real chance that we could drive down with the people down Highway 40 and they could be watching grizzly bear chase fucking bighorn sheep around. Wow, that would be interesting. Happen a lot on how there's been like three, four videos of grizzly bears t- uh, chasing bighorn sheep. Right wow, now. really? That would be incredible. So, did they take him? Did they take him away to their hibernation? Did they hibernate with them, or do they just load up now? No, they just load up. They just load up. They don't. That's, actually... that's a good time to shoot a bear because they're loaded up on tons of fat, and the fat to get the bear fat, the bear grease. It's popular in the chats right now some strange reason but uh yeah load up on that bear fat i mean i was reading today that said that there's grizzly bears roaming around some towns in bc wow i mean well don't forget we saw bears with kevin driving on that exact road i mean we were we were videotaping all these bears were they brown bears oh, yeah, miles went out this year we've seen two black bear cubs and two grizzly bear cubs one drive i can see bears uh i wouldn't say half the time but 25% of the time, if I want to go see some bears, we'll find some bears. Wow. Yeah. Usually, honestly, dude, it's just on a highway 40. Yeah. But then you can also go down that back way down. I don't even know what number it is, but we might see some fucking angry grizzly bears. So that'll be fun. Yeah. So that's uh we are going to get a beautiful drive through the Rockies there for that, right? Oh, yeah. We'll go through Banff National Park. Maybe if people want, we could pop them in at some point into Lake Moraine, maybe on the way back. We'll have to see because it does get dark early around there. I mean, the time changes the week before. So, you know, we pick you. If we leave the airport at 2, it'll definitely be dark by the t- almost by the time we're going through BAM, 3, 4 o'clock. If we go straight to the venue, then it'll be kind of light the whole way. And uh, with the time change, right? But I mean, well, that, that we'll means dark that- till 5, probably 5.30. Because it's, yeah. it's still December 21st, the shortest day. So it's still like a well, six three weeks hour that. drive, though. What? How long? Three, three hours. Yeah. Just ish. So we'll head straight there, I think. Have make dinner, have dinner, all that kind of stuff. 
And uh, then the next day, I mean, it's only an hour and a half. If, if enough people want to go check out Banff, we'll go check out Banff. There's, a, there's so much scenery, Canadian Rocky scenery, and the hot springs to check out. You know, we're going to keep the schedule pretty light so we can go do that kind of stuff. You guys want to go do a hike, go do this, go do that. We can do all that kind of stuff. And uh, it's going to be a time we're going to have. So here's I'm hoping. Tell me if you think this is a little over the top. But I was thinking um, we'll cut a bunch of, I'm going to like, <laughs> I'll bring the head from the elk and have it like out front of the cabin while we eat it over the weekend. Is that over the top or is that a nice touch? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. It feels a bit over the top, top for me. I mean, you're going to bring the head? Like, is it kind of, is it a skeleton? Have huge antlers? No, I'll fucking, it'll be cold. I'll just like, just, I'll, I'm only going like the head? Yeah, I don't know. That's too, yeah, that's weird. That's too Viking for me, man. That's just. I, you're always yeah. talking about wanting to be a Viking. and I know. A, but this Viking for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. I mean, I maybe mean, if you get feedback from other, you know, Brandon Powell and Anthony that's coming out from the UK. I well, mean, how Powell's many people do you have after the elk hunt? So, no, no, I know, but oh, you're not even—you don't even have the elk killed yet. You're planning on killing the elk. Well, I have plenty stashed away, but yeah, I'm yeah, gonna yeah. kill it if I do. If I kill one there, I figure that's the one to use, right? Why not? It'll yeah. be the one I just, you know. Bingo, yeah. bango, cut some fucking steaks off that bitch, and away we go. Yeah. I was thinking about killing a cow just for the, uh, dude, I got the moose steaks back. They're so good. It was a young cow, like a two-year-old cow. Oh, I could tell, right? I killed her, and I was slapping her ass when Miles was there. I was like, ooh, she's going to be tender. Sure enough. You tell you just like see the whole thing jiggling, and there's no fat on the thing, right? That's just the meat. Is that like? Soft. Is no, yeah, you get no bull and give it a slap, it'll be like fucking hitting the fridge. <laughs> you know, even them elk. There's no jiggle in those elk we got, right? But that cow, soft. Meat's just tender. So good. But that's my shit. I'm gonna bring an elk. I'm gonna kill an elk, especially for the thing. I actually might go out with Brandon Powell. Well, I'm going to go out with Anthony. Shout out to Anthony. He's loving the show. He's sending me pictures of pheasants. Fucking faggot. Um, Those are beautiful pictures of the UK he was sending. I mean, yeah, he, but it's all because of his pheasants. Because I haven't yeah. shot, I haven't been able to tie into a pheasant yet this year. I mean, you can hear the bell, like church bells in the distance. Is that the one? Yeah, yeah. Before he gets here, I'll have killed some pheasants. For sure. I uh, I hope. It's three weeks. It's two weeks. He gets here on the first, so it's well, two well, weeks. Well, let's talk more about the Canada thing then. How many people that we're gonna have? It's pretty intimate gathering, and it's not gonna be too yeah, like, like twenty formal, of us. Right? We're just hanging out for the basically it's we're hanging out for the weekend, right? Yeah, it's uh, well, we're gonna see some stuff. Like I say, we're gonna be in the in the heart of the Canadian Rocky Mountains. I know, but it's gonna be more of that than hanging around in a lecture room kind of thing, right? Yeah, we like, see hot springs in the field. We're gonna spend a lot of time out in the field while it's bright out. So you know, from nine till five, we'll try and be out. You know, but we won't be far. I think it's like a small enough number that I'll probably just bring my like barbecue along. And that, and while we're out at the hot springs, I could be like barbecue and antelope burgers or something. Yeah, that would nice be nice cool. warm food while we're out there. Yeah, that'd be cool. So, yeah, that'll be fucking dope. It's gonna be a time, man. I'm telling you, you people want to come out and uh, see how us Canadians do it. That'll there's be still a few spots, right? Uh, oh, yeah, there's a few spots. There's like five or six. I'd love to fill those up. It'd be great if you guys came. It's a cheap one. I'm gonna, I might even, I might, fuck, I'll throw some guns in the truck. We got a nice big property there. If people want to go, I'll take you guys out to shoot off some guns if you want. Because I know that's Anthony's super excited to come play with some guns. I'm gonna take him out to the range here in town to my local gun club so we can shoot all the handguns and shit too. Wow. And we go in the elk hunt. We're gonna kill an elk, maybe two. If me and Miles each want to get one at least. So Maybe two, maybe a whole one, because I feel like we could almost eat a whole elk at CAC. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. 
25. I guess. I mean, I guess if there's 20 of us horking down meat, yeah. like, yeah. Not quite, but close. But the Canadians could take home a care package, maybe. Yeah. It's being yeah. haunted elk meat. Anyway. Paul, Paul, ja Paul from Jasper will be there, right? I don't know. I'm still trying to convince him to come. He's coming on the elk hunt, but I haven't oh, convinced okay. him to come to Cat yet. As of right now, he is not. But I'd oh, love wow. Um, and then... Powell's in town on the 5th, so he's going to want to do something. I might take him out either. I don't know what he's going to want to do. We'll see. He's going to want to go hunting, too. So. And we'll have an animal up there, too. He'll probably want to go hunt grizzlies or something. Well. No one him. going to do that. I wouldn't mind going bear hunting. but we Is that illegal? Or? Not for me. Not for you, but for him it would be? Well, yeah, he's an American swooping in. You could do it. You could hunt black bears easily if you had if you want to pay the money. I'm sure it costs you a, a couple thousand bucks for what to come in as a non-resident and hunt black bears. Like for what would that cost to cover though? The tag, really? The tag. I don't know. I know the birds ain't bad. I think I don't know. You'd have to ask Anthony what he costs, but I'd say it's less than a hundred bucks. Yeah, for a non-resident to come in and be able to hunt birds in Alberta, and uh, so we're I'm taking Anthony duck hunt. Are you coming along for that? That'd be a good time to drag you out to the swamp. You're not going to shoot anything, but you can just hang out. No, we talked about this last time. Like I don't have weight. I don't have like the gear for all this, right? Oh no, no, we take you to a spot where you don't have to like get in the water. You only need the waders to set up the decoys and go retrieve the ducks. You come out to the swamp and just hang out for a morning. Well, maybe Powell would want to do that too, right? No? Yeah, yeah, we'll drag him out too. Powell might have the license. I've got the extra shotguns for Powell and Anthony both to hunt ducks. Mm -hmm. So it'll just be like one morning, we'll get up at like five in the morning and head out. Yeah, I'll see. Maybe I can come early for that or something. I got an Airbnb. Maybe I can meet you guys. Up the road in Chestermere here. Oh, cool. That you could stay at with them. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be good. So yeah, contact at the cabin, Canada. It's going to be a fucking time for sure. I've got, uh, we also have the Mojave Desert, which has the updated promo video. If people want to check that out. Also on the contact at the cabin.com website. That's the backpacking uh, extraordinaire adventure through the Mojave Desert. Next now that we met about that, that seems amazing too. Like, holy shit, dude. Fucking dope. Camping with the base camp and then heading out every every day to That's right. Check yeah, shit out. Hardcore camping, cool camping, the good kind. And then uh the one you guys have all been waiting for, we finally got the Eclipse, the Canyon, the Total Eclipse Festival, our first contact at the cabin's first crack at a festival. We're teaming up with the Brothers of the Serpent and Ben from Uncharted X. And uh, we're trying to do, and was it David, right? David? The new team member and uh, Holocene. And those guys, and we are trying to bring at you, not trying, we're doing it. I mean, we're doing, is it 400 people? <laughs> we're doing a 400-person festival for the total eclipse with bands and speakers and and partying you know there's uh gonna be a bunch of great time a bunch of kids kids are free kids uh, was it kids under 12 are free kids under 10 are free something like that so we're encouraging a bunch of kids to come out tickets are f so we had a bunch of people on the waiting list and mailing list and stuff like that so tickets are flying off the shelf uh there is still a bunch of reduced general admission tickets it's 10 percent off or something like that for the first 100 tickets but yeah, this is going to be a time. $50 Dynasty headlining a bunch of other local bands. It's a few days, guys. It's a Saturday, Sunday, Monday night, is it? Do I know? think it's Sunday, Monday. Uh, Sunday and then night, Monday Tuesday. night. I think it's Sunday night, Monday night. Leave Tuesday because leave of the Tuesday. So yeah. you don't get caught up in the traffic. Yeah. Right at the heart. We're like, what? In the like, path of totality. In the path of totality. So we're going to be there on that Monday morning. April 8th, the last total eclipse for 100 years almost in North America, if I'm not mistaken. That's that's uh, It's the last one in your lifetime, if you're listening, probably. You know, 
Maybe and a not. shout out to oh. David Kasai is the guy that uh, we're, we also partnered with on this. He's we're we're using sort of his festival property now. We changed the plans completely, and uh, that's why sort of it took so long. We had to, to get we around out rocking and weaving because we had a venue fall through. But we're coming back at you. Tickets are on sale. We're hoping to sell out. And here's the thing: we're hoping to make this maybe an annual festival where we do this thing every year and uh, do a music slash speaker mix up. And we're try- kind of trying to use this this uh, Eclipse one. I mean, Eclipse is a big deal, motherfuckers. You don't want to miss this. I'm telling you, I seen one. It's great. It's once in a lifetime. Luckily, I'm going to get twice in a lifetime. I might even try and get more than that because once you see one, you're like, whoa. And then, you know, it's worth traveling here or there to go try and see another one when you can. So this one here, if, you know, think it's a big deal to travel to Texas, it's not. Because if you want to do this again down the road, you're going to be traveling overseas. So get your tickets for that. It's cheap. Even VIPs under a thousand bucks. It's all camping. And uh, yeah. Do you know where what, to, what they'd be flying into? San Antonio, Texas, I believe, is the airport, international airport. So I will add that to the page so you can just go to contact at the cabin.com. There'll be a button on the top that'll take you to the Eclipse page over at Eventbrite, and you can get on that thing. I'm telling you, this will be the Eclipse party of the century. You guys do not want to miss it. We don't have to move. We don't have to stress. We don't have to do anything. Just wake up in the morning. Boom. Eclipse the shit. I'm bringing the whole family. Awesome. What else you got? Oh, I'm moving now too. Yeah, good. congratulations. Found Finally it. Finally get the fuck out of town. A great. I mean, that's what a what a brilliant uh, thing you found. I mean, dude, when we were looking around for those types of places, there was none available. And you, and you found one and you got it. That's amazing. Yeah, well, we just fluked in a couple hours after it came available. Sean found it. And uh, we we're one of the only the third person to reply to it. We were luckily in the situation where my landlord wants to move back into this place. So he was super fluid on the move out date. It was just like as soon as he could get a place, basically. So we had started looking. Wasn't a lot out there. And uh, we were looking at another acreage. And this one popped up, which is just sort of perfect. Nestled inside of a bunch of trees, way more trees than I would have ever expected to get in Alberta. Oh, my God. Really? That's great. Yeah, it's like three or four acres of trees. What? Yeah. With most oh, of it right next to the house. Any pathways through it and stuff? Or I guess. Yeah, it's like I'm right off the canal. The 106 acres goes along the canal, which is a pathway which will take you to town. And the lake's only five minutes away, so I can drive my snow machine right to the lake anytime. And, uh, and dude, it's only five minutes from town. Wow. Not from Calgary, but from like, you know, a country town. Yeah, yeah, my kids yeah. go to school in. The little town that my kids already go to school in, so yeah. now they will get picked up by the bus and I won't have to drive them so much anymore. Wow, that's great. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. There's a bunch of deer and porcupine and pheasants on the property already. And I cannot see another house from my house. Yeah, that's direction. The closest house is about a quarter mile. That's amazing. But I can't yeah. see it because there's trees in the way. So yeah, we're pretty stoked. Looking forward to that. To getting the fuck out of here. I mean, Chester is getting so big, it's crazy, dude. Oh yeah, it's we just it's, started plowing that that spot north of the 17 now, next to the your tire shop. Yeah, they're just flat, and they're that's all turning into houses now. Yeah. Another like two years and it'll be attached to the city. Yeah. So I'm out of here, man. Fucking another half an hour east. The city will never get there. Yeah. Into a county where uh, I can do whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. That's good. Well, I got an update here right. about only, only like seven minutes from Walmart. That's so right. In some ways, that's frustrating. But with young kids, and everything, you know, it's kind of nice. I'll be honest. I'm, I'm, I enjoy that I can be at the hardware store in 10 minutes, grocery store 10 minutes, and still not see another house from my house. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that sounds like a perfect... Right. Yeah. 
So I wanted to give a little update on the Malcolm Bendel stuff. Um, I mean, this upcoming weekend, we're going to have a great episode dropping with George Howard on audio and stuff. It's already on Substack. Um, and half of it's on on Rumble, etc. cetera. But um, there was, uh, I think they were in Switzerland or somewhere in Europe doing a test uh, in front of a bunch of people as well. So, and then... Jordan from Alchemical Science, uh, he's been in communicado with, uh, or sorry, in communications with Malcolm directly as well. And he does some really good sort of uh, analysis and sort of uh, summaries of all this. So I'm just going to play a couple of short clips from him. So I, so it's not me talking about this technology. It's, it's him for a bit. So here we go. Malcolm gives us plenty of juicy specs while he's chatting about the build here. So first. This is about his uh, industrial scale retrofit in the UK. This is like, so this is supplying the power grid. So this is probably the most relevant, uh, important, direct sort of like direct application to power grids, you know, not just on a car or not just on another little generator. This is like a huge thing. So me. First of all, the specs of the industrial generator itself, it's the 30,000 CC Perkins mains gas motor. So running on methane primarily. And this motor drives a 300 kilowatt max electrical generator, which is used to produce power for the mains electrical grid. It's managed by a computer controlled system, and this has been specifically tuned to account for the thunderstorm generator retrofit. The thunderstorm generator retrofit itself is built on the principles of sacred geometry, ratios, and angles. The specs for this build are as follows. There are two spheres to direct the flow of the vortexing gases, one guiding the output from the exhaust into the pipe, the other guiding the output of the plasmoid generator bubbler into the other end of the pipe in the opposing direction. The dimensions of both sets of spheres is the same. The outer sphere has a diameter of 24 inches. The inner sphere has a diameter of 18 inches. It doesn't look like there was a third inner guide sphere in this design, but if there was, it would be 12 inches. The ratio is the most important factor here. It must always be 4, 3, 2. Or that topic more. I'm skipping it ahead here. Next, we can find the water consumption of the unit is about five liters per week. It's not exactly consumption, though, as most of this water ends up in the water trap, uh, which is between the bubbler and the generator on this build. It just means the water needs to be returned or replaced into the initial chamber at a rate of around five liters per week with you know a small negligible amount lost. There is very little actual consumption of the water. The water is more just a catalyst fluid for the MSART plasmoids to be born in. And then some of the gases from the water are used and taken in by the plasmoids after the cavitation bubbles collapse. But this is apparently fairly negligible in terms of actual water volume lost in the reactions. So they had three separate gas analyzers hooked up to the retrofit exhaust during these trials. And we can see the most significant results recorded here. As per all of the previous trials, they're getting an astounding reduction in carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and hydrocarbons, and a high increase in oxygen. We can see the results are actually a little better when the generator was tested under load. So I'm going to move forward a little bit further here, just to skip ahead so I don't play the whole thing. So to quickly sum up what's going on here again, the hot exhaust gases are being introduced into the large outer sphere at an angle so that it's guided to spin around the sphere and into the pipe in a counterclockwise spiral. On the other end of the generator, the cold water gases and plasmoids are introduced into the inner sphere from the bubbler chamber, where they are guided to take a clockwise spiral around the sphere and into the other end of the pipe. Remember that the cold clockwise vortex is occurring inside the inner 18-inch sphere and 4-inch pipe, while the hot counterclockwise vortex is occurring inside the outer 24 inch sphere and the outer six inch pipe. So the two streams don't actually physically touch. They are separated by a layer of steel pipe. Despite this, there is an electromagnetic aspect to a thunderstorm. And this is what Malcolm is utilizing here. At some point in the pipe, the two vortexes meet and an event horizon occurs. We can call this the plane of inertia. Where the counter opposing electromagnetic force of the two vortexes cancel each other out and there is no motion, the eye of the hurricane. This is where the reaction occurs. As we know, just like ball lightning, Shamir plasmoids have their own homeostatic containment fields, which allow them to move and act through walls and solid steel without interacting with it. Wherever there is both a high positive charge and a high negative charge, 
there's always this, the desire for them to equalize. And this is, of course, what is going to happen here too. Lightning occurs and the gap between opposing charges is bridged by the ionized path of the plasmoids. This reaction disassociates the carbon back into DC energy with no frequency, uh, which the plasmoids feed on to increase in size and charge. And any remaining disassociated protons after the plasmoids are done feeding is reconstructed into oxygen atoms, which continue to, on to be ejected from the exhaust. This is the oxygen increase we're seeing in the exhaust gas analysis results I showed earlier. It's probably a little bit much for most of us to dwell on yet, but Mal I won't go on any further. Malcolm gets into time, time dilation and stuff like that. So of course, wow, wow, but, wow. But I mean, that's pretty interesting. That's modern alchemy there. I mean, I really do think this is happening. I mean, and you know, the other fascinating part is that all the carbon scale got removed from the engine and actually cleaning the engine out as well, which is pretty fascinating. So it's, it's transmuting all the carbon like that's stuck in there too into whatever oxygen or something. Well, you should transmute some of your dollars into some support for the Grand America show. You guys are coming at you is over 600 episodes all there all for free that whole back catalog you know times are dire around here with the audiobook crisis that we've been going through and everything else we are picking up and keeping on that being said you know uh i could still use your support if you ain't signed up for a monthly here yet what are you doing you know uh it's a value for value show so if you are getting some value from our little podcast here you should be heading over to grammarica.ca slash support today and signing up for a monthly or making a one-time donation and letting us know what the show is worth to you. I mean, people have been loving the Outlawed news roundups we've been doing over at Grammarica Outlawed. If you guys want to check that out, over at grammaricaoutlawed.ca or you could just search Grammarica Outlawed in your podcast player and it'll come right up. And then we do a bunch of audiobooks. We just published... Uh, Robertson panel and the other one you did, those are both on the podcast already. Oh, oh right on. Oh, I should put those on X and stuff. Yeah, the Robertson panel is like, it's, it's the official rid, pivot to ridicule of the ufology back in the, like all the like legit scientists saying like, well, how are we going to handle this phenomenon? Let's like debunk it uh, back in 1953, I think. And then what was the other one you mentioned? I uh, forget what it is now. Uh, the master key system? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's well, the master key system is like, I think, I truly believe this is like uh, think and grow rich kind of like on steroids in a way. It's it's a lot more detailed, a lot more uh, procedural in a way, I think. Um, it's really interesting. A lot about our, our thoughts and how to how to connect with uh, with our thoughts and change our subconscious and stuff. Dude, dude, it's really like a lot of the modern stuff we hear now, and this book's 100 years old. So that's in our podcast too, right? That's in the podcast. That's from Charles Hanel. That's right. So check that shit out, guys. Do you have a bio? I do, or, yeah. Uh, John, yeah. Yeah, John Kerwin has served in full and part-time ministry as a worship leader and pastor for over 30 years. He's the founder of Wake Up or Else, PMA. 508c1 online christian fellowship for the truther community there you go <laughs> with over 5,000 subscribers and over 400,000 views wake up or else pma has been providing insight into the truther's journey since 2017 and the book that we that we talk about um we talk about more than the book of course but it's the conspiracy theorist survival guide a guidebook for persecuted truthers there you go there you have it guys enjoy the chat with the one and only John Kerwin.
Ron Kerwin, thanks for joining us. A bit of a last minute scheduling uh, opportunity here. So thanks for uh, joining us in Grand America. How's it going? It's great. I'm just stoked. Just talking to you guys in the pre-meeting. It's been really, really, I know we're going to have a great conversation today. This is going to be oh, awesome. Yeah. This will be good because we we do approach a lot of different topics. We like to keep it varied, actually. Like, to be honest with you, we've had to sort of push back on some topics lately that are that are too a bit too repetitive because we want to keep it sort of all over, right, sure. a little bit. Because, yep. it, you know, the, I guess our listener base is interested in many things like like we are. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, you're, you're, uh, you know, you're going down a lot of rabbit holes. You've got this, this book, the conspiracy theorist survival guide, a guidebook for persecuted truthers. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to talk about lots of different things. I mean, where do you want to start? Maybe like 2017 seemed to be a note that you had on your, on your book, uh, description there. Why, why 2017? Well, that was the. That was the time I got converted, if you want to put it that way. Uh, My experience is very similar to probably most of the people in your audience, because for a lot of us, we're what we call normies, which I finally figured out where that term comes from. My daughter said, Dad, I wish you were normal. (laughs) So the the unconvinced named themselves normies because they want us to be normal. Oh, that's anyway. I was just, you know, I was a I was a pattern day trader. I was married with I love my wife to this moment uh four kids living in a nice house day trading and uh I came across the fact that uh, the federal reserve wasn't federal <laughs> right I was just like everybody else I really wasn't looking under the hood I was not you know across that what's that how'd you come across that well I was day trading so I'm in the financial markets and I just I, I don't know it's it, it's very weird like when you go from normie to truther uh, it's like God comes up behind you, taps on your shoulders, like, Hey, did you notice that the lunar lander looks like it's made of curtain rods and cardboard? It's got scotch tape on it. Like, how did we never see these things before? It's just this moment in time where it's your time and the veil gets lifted just a little bit. So I noticed, I noticed that this, this thing was a, a privately owned corporation. It's incorporated in Puerto Rico. I started looking into it and I'm like, this is, got to be a coax that i mean everybody in washington has to know it's not part of the government like looking back it's i'm so embarrassed you know to think how naive i was but that's where we start so here's what happened and i'm I'm sure your readers will relate to this when i realized that that was like they were purposely lying i said to myself well if that's not true what else isn't true right and that is the quintessential hallmark of a truther is you begin to question officialdom and you so want to know federal what's under the rock. You? What's that? It was the federal reserve for you. That was your red pill. That was my red pill, bro. Federal well, reserve I mean, wasn't federal. So you're an OG then you must be an OG. When, what's the date? What was the date when you that was like, around 2017 is when, Mc, when John McCain oh, was so that's, I guess, the that's president. Why. That's a lot later than I was expecting. I was expecting you to say like uh, 15 years ago or something like yeah, that. Yeah, no, I'm about six <laughs> years old in this, six, seven yeah. years old in this journey. Okay. Yeah. Cause you talked to some of these guys that were like freaking out about the Federal Reserve back when it was like putting flyers under, yeah, under windshield wipers in the parking lot or handing out CDs or something like that. But I don't know. When was, when were we, Graham? When did we like, cause we were paranormal people, but, I'd say 9-11 was like the truther thing for me because up until that, we just kind of stayed out of politics and we're happy to ignore it. Yeah. Kind of blissfully ignorant, just like the steak dude in the matrix. Well, we had Edward Griffin on early, fairly early, I think. And he was the one that wrote the creature from the Jekyll. Oh, yeah. And I mean, and we had John Perkins on, and that was a book that a lot of normie friends of mine were, were, were fascinated by and that's kind of one that opens up a lot of people's eyes like that he his was uh the uh, economic hitman and like because w- before i even moved to alberta so that was before the podcast people were reading that book like pe- friends i knew which are they weren't even conspiracy people but they were into that book so that's another book that kind of <clears throat> wakes people up yeah so Edward we go back Griffin, to a little bit, little Griffin's bit like a patriarch man that yeah. guy's like Red pill convention. He's got this yeah. big convention. Does he still do that? Uh, yeah, I think so. I, I, I mean, he's done it a few. I went to like I think the first one he did um, in Montana. Right. And I think that, yeah, I think they were online. I think he still does. Yeah. Yeah. 
Pretty interesting speakers there, yeah. Oh yeah. So so what um so then what how how did it go after that? Like what was your journey from like you know right. I, I love how you say the hallmark of a truther is then you like you realize they lied about that. What else did they lie about? So what was kind of next? Right. Well then then you this is so common, everybody will relate to this. You start turning over rocks, and it turns out that, that there's a conspiracy under every almost every rock. So I think the next thing I found out was the moon landing was fake. That took me about five minutes. And then, you know, chemtrails, clones, underground bases, you know, the alien deception. You just run the gambit, you know. And then your your loved ones are starting to get nervous, though. <laughs> They're starting to wonder what rabbit hole did you fall into. And, uh, you know, I talk about that in the book. That it's chapter six where I talk about the three stages of rejection. Because at first, your loved ones try to keep it light. You know, they're like, oh, I don't really go into conspiracy theories much. Ha, ha, ha. And they keep it light because, you know, they don't want to dog you. But as soon as they introduce that term, that's a shaming term. It's a CIA term from the 60s, 67 bulletin. And, uh, you know, it, it means a lot of things. It means, it means I don't believe what you're saying is true. I, I'm embarrassed that you're bringing it up, and I don't want to talk about it anymore. That's what it means. Yeah, yeah. So we talked about uh, how relationships, like it used to be okay. It, mm. Like, so did this? I wonder when this changed then, because you've sort of been researching this. Like, we used to be able to talk about religion and politics, and you know, I could have a girlfriend that was a different political affinity or different ideology than me. I don't think I would ever want that now, though. So it's also affecting. Yeah, it's not just affecting people. Like, it's not just saying now. Oh, now, like, uh, you know, we can't talk about religion or politics but now like i don't want to be in that relationship where i can't talk about it because it's affecting us directly i think that's what covid did is it used mm -hmm. to be kind of like at an arm's length like you whether you were involved in politics or not it was kind of affecting the economy and some things and maybe like freedom but when covid came around it started to affect us directly like you can't do yeah. that. you can't do that and if if you can't talk about it if you're not on the same side of that i think that becomes a big issue yeah yeah, the tyranny is hard to uh, ignore, and you you could walk away from relationships. But what is what is when your spouse or your kids are on the other side of the fence? It makes it a difficult thing. And what happened with me is, of course, I didn't shut up, and I kept researching. What happens is you you you're so freaked out, you just can't believe you live in the Truman Show, and you're changing overnight. But your spouse and your children and your friends are remaining the same. And this gap is just growing wider and wider. And so by six months into it a year, you go to step two of rejection, which is where they start to manage you, right? They start giving you edicts and decrees like, hey, when we go to my sister's house, I don't want you to talk about your crazy things, right? That kind of, um, it's very, as a husband, that's really disrespectful and demeaning to have start to get handled by your wife and kids, right? I remember my ex-wife telling me not to wear certain shirts around her parents. What? Yeah. <laughs> and I wore the wrong shirt once. Oof. Well, that doesn't make sense. Like, what do you mean? Like, she wouldn't. She didn't want you to dress up. No, I had a shirt that said like "How We Roll," and it was in like. Uh, oh, okay. You know, just as like some slight marijuana insinuation there, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, Darren likes to try. Darren likes to wear offensive shirts. Still nice. So. He's probably it's probably because of that he's pushing back a little bit because of that. Well, that's what happens. My opinions. On my yeah, chat. that's that's what happens is you find out that the world, you know, is it's run by Joseph Mengele types like Fauci or whatever, <laughs> and and you realize that you're a danger and you have a sense of self preservation comes up that you never had before. So priorities shift dramatically, your ideals shift, and your spouse and children are the same. And you go from like living on a cruise liner to living on a battleship. You're on a war footing. And uh, you're trying to tell them, and they're looking at you like you're obsessed. But if you're in a burning building, uh, you should be obsessed. You should be running out, freaking out. And that's us. We've, we've found out all these things. And uh, all of a sudden, we're on a mission. You know, we, we can't do life like we used to. Well, did you notice, I mean, so it's interesting because COVID was directly in the middle of like your start and now where we are now. Yeah. 
So did you end up with a little bit more clout after COVID? Like, how did that affect your relationship? No. With the normies that you talk to when you're like, see what I've been saying all along here? Like, they don't have our best interest in mind. Like, now it's up. Now you can actually, like, protect yourself. By uh, no there. vindication, no. Yeah. Nope. That would have been nice. You get vindication, Graham? Has anyone, has anyone ever got vind- I got vindication one time. No, it was a couple times you got it. Well, only real vindication once where one guy called me up and was like, uh, I'm sorry you were right about everything. <laughs> and unfortunately, that was someone that got, you know, allegedly. A big heart? A big heart from uh, <laughs> from all the MRNA. MRNA? MRNA. Anyway, because he was directly afflicted by something that I told me shouldn't take. Yep. And, you know, that's not how I wanted to to get it. But I think, I can't think of it. I mean, there's been some offhanded stuff. There's definitely some people that are coming around. Yeah. But, you know, there's very few people that come around and, and are, like, willing to say you were right. <laughs> you know? Right. It's, like, right. it's just not talked about at the, at the best case scenario. But, uh, I mean, it does seem like like a lot of people are are coming around to this is weird stuff's weird you know they're not quite all in yet but they're like exactly don't you think we they're just you could see them like just dabbling into entry level stuff that I'm yeah yeah oh, <laughs> wait till you get totally. to with that one buddy <laughs> you Google Ruby Ridge or right. you know, all these things Golf of Tonkin all these things they've never heard of you know it's like no doubt get on another um another uh Jewish and arab rat here tonight because you know that's like the sort of this everywhere uh, you know i was listening today about beheading babies and i just can't help but think about babies and incubators and weapons of mass destruction and whatever the gulf of tonkin bullshit was and i'm just it just seems to be bullshit all the way fucking down the line when every time this happens i find out we were lying to i mean yep. To the point where when these fucking schools get shot up, and I know for a fact, and I'm sure shot, that a bunch of them are real, but the first thing I got to go to whenever anything happens, like a Sandy Hook is, huh, did it though? Is it? Did it, right? You know, because I can't trust any of the fucking information chain all the way down. You know, it's like we don't know where we're at. We don't know where the fuck we're at, but we know that they lied to us to get us into the last half a dozen wars. So, right. Uh, you know, maybe this one time, because it's like, if they lied about the last half a dozen, then we could probably dig even deeper and find out that even more of them are bullshit. You know, it's mm-hmm. all fucking bullshit. But right. I think that's an important point for, and I don't know if you address this in your book or not. I didn't get a chance to read it, but, but is, is because we need some discernment too. You know, we, we can't jump on every, meme that goes the other way or every sort of narrative that goes against the mainstream either. So for me, for example, I'm trying to get in the habit of just sitting with stuff for a few days or until the, until the air clears, whether it's about the Maui stuff and the, the, the do weapons or whether it's about the, the babies coming up in this one. Like I just, I'm just really trying to stay completely kind of neutral for a while until everything settles down. I mean, <clears throat> is that something? Cause you know, it doesn't help to have everybody running in the other direction either with false because it's so easy to fake the info now. Yes. Against us. You know, the other side just has to put out a, a little meme about buddy in his Freemason suit or something. And everybody's saying it's a psyop. Yep. 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 That's a big problem. Uh, I noticed that in the, in the truther community, um, that uh, there's a, I believe it's a trying to co-opt, the truther movement by introducing the, what I call everyone's a shill narrative. (laughs) Yeah. Because everyone is not a shill. You guys aren't shills, but you're, you're being persecuted by um, censorship, right? They're coming after the podcasters they are coming after my, my YouTube channel. When I first posted the first two videos I ever posted, got 150,000 views each. Uh, yeah. And then after that, they just throttled it down. I'm lucky if I get 1500 now. <laughs> so we're being censored, but I'm not a shill. So all the way up the food chain, of course, the higher you go up, the more rarefied air it is. And those people, you know, if they're not bribed or blackmailed, 
you know, like the, the Democrat Republican narrative is they're both the same guild. There's two wings of the same bird. Same thing with the white hat, black hat narrative. The white hats are all Freemasons too. We just might not end up going into total tyranny, you know, in our lifetime if the white hats come into power, right? But they're still the same guild. Um, but, you know, was JFK a shill? Because they assassinated him. How about Reagan? They shot him. So I think what's more likely than everybody's a shill is there's factions within the deep state. You've got the Russian mob, you've got the China deep state, you've got the white dragons, the Asian guys, you've got the P3 Masons, you've got the, the Rockefeller, Bush, Obama, Clinton dynasty, and they're all vying for uh, control. Some of them have more uh, anti-human agendas than other ones. They're like, no, we don't want to kill everybody off. You're not. <laughs> you know? So I think that makes more sense to, for what we're seeing. I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. And I like that you named a lot of those. Now, what about more of a spiritual enclave or like, what about a, you know, a more of a hidden sort of spiritual one? I've been thinking lately that I feel like it's been, you know, there's these masters and adepts that sort of run around in secret over the hundreds and thousands of years learning, you know, basically superpowers. You know, if, if you, if you meditate in a cave long enough, you, you know, you might learn to do some stuff. And if you're not with the light, I mean, what about sort of groups that are like hidden like that, that are sort of causing more of a spiritual war? Right. Like who's really, who's really minding the store, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, like, I, like I feel like some of those guys you mentioned are sort of like the foot soldier types more so, you know? Right. You go all the way up the food chain. Here it is. Um, so at the top, best I can tell, you know, on the bottom rung, you got the intelligence agencies, police, military, religion, governments, education, and media. <clears throat> and then the corporations are really running the governments through the uh, special interests. Then the IMF above that. Then the central banks, the Bank of International Settlements, the Bilderberg Group is an operation uh, control uh, network. And then the, the UN Chatham House, the Royal Institute of Internal Affairs. Above that is the Freemason Lodges and the secret societies. Then you got all these think tanks like the Trilateral Commission, the Council on Foreign Affairs. Then above that is the Vatican, the Washington, and the City of London. So that's the three city states. One is for religion. One is for uh, banking. Military, right? Washington's military city of London is uh, banking. And then you've got the Committee of 300, the Council of 13, and at the very top, you, as far as I can tell, you got the pin yard. And these huh. people are at the very top. These people aren't even human. They're Luciferian, blood drinking pedivores that would freak you out if you knew what they were really like. They might even be lizard, lizard people, Dracos. I don't know. They're, I mean, they're not. What's a pedivore? Well, uh, uh, a carnivore is somebody that eats meat, oh, and a pedophilia, pedof pedophile is somebody that diddles with little kids and in their case they rape and torture them and then they eat them oh i see so it's just that yeah it's like okay i see that's, yeah, their, that's their nectar is adrenochrome yeah. adrenochrome yeah. is the nectar yeah so it does get spiritual at the top mm -hmm. yeah these people are deeply religious and they are running a very ancient program that was shown to us in the book of revelation and daniel Thousands of years ago. And if it ain't playing out, bro, I don't know what book you're reading because that thing is <laughs> nailing it. I mean, can you, can you so much examples? detail. What's that? Can you give us some examples? Well, you know, sure. Even, even outside of an example, just sort of like a whole rundown of how that works, what the a few examples would be great, but then and also like how we got here and where we're going based on that would be cool too. If you know Absolutely. What I mean. Well, um, of course, I remember in the first rollout um, with the masks, I, I refused to wear a mask. So I went into, I remember, a hair salon, you know, good clips or whatever it was, no mask, no service. So I, I already have, I'm American state national. So, you know, we're, we're in the legal education movement. So I had my little clipboard and, uh, you know, I said, um, you know, this is a, uh, a violation of the Americans with Disabilities Act. It's also a civil rights violation. And I'm a sorry, but I'm going to have to insist that I get a, a, uh, a haircut without a mask. And she refused. She got the manager and the cops came. 
And so um, what that was, though, was Revelation 13 in action. Revelation 13, which was written by John on the Isle of Patmos, said they won't be able to buy or sell without the mark. So that was the mask of the beast. And then what I was telling everybody is if you go along with this di face diaper, the next thing they're going to do is they're going to make you wear, you know, put that stuff in your arm. Oh, that's ridiculous. Well, that was before they started doing that, you know? And so sure enough, you know, all over the place where they had, you know, you had to have your uh, thing on your phone, the proof of vaccination. And then all the people that got fired if they didn't take it. I mean, this is right out of the book of Revelation. And if you look at what's in that thing, are we able to talk about that, by the way? Because Yeah, sure. That's fine. Yeah. Are you sure? You're going, not going on YouTube, are you? Well, right YouTube now. right now. But uh, <laughs> welcome. I mean, we got zero. Stuff, <laughs> but, uh, no, I'm no, kidding. no. You can't, you can't do that on YouTube. You can't you can't go there any further than we are. Well, usually we don't like I'll just, I'll just do a file to say that the COVID-19 vaccine seems to be killing people. I mean, okay. <laughs> It seems to be, you know, killing people. It's well, not it's not effective. No, it's definitely. So there go, there's a strike. So they can only give us one strike for the we're, video. We're, so yeah. All bets are up. The, <laughs> the real thing here now is going to see if they shut down the live stream because we've never had that happen. Before. Right. Yeah. I don't know what StreamYard does, but. I didn't you ask could... Graham before I did that either. So I hope he's okay with it. That's okay. I mean, we're, we finally worked our way out of strike mode, so we can we can risk it a little bit. YouTube is trigger happy for sure. But, you yeah. know, to answer your question, there are, there are a lot of very specific um, predictions in the Bible which seem to be coming true, uh, like the Euphrates River drying up was a very clearly prophesied sign that we're very close to the end of the age, and that's happened. Euphrates River is drying up. Um, the book of Amos, chapter 8, talks about God says, I'm going to send a famine, but not of bread. I'm going to send a famine of the word. Men will seek it and will not find it. This is what we believe one of the prophecies that's predicting the Mandela effect, where the Bible is being changed. I'm sorry if you're not, if you, if you, if that makes you upset, let me just assure you that God's not a liar. I've been in the ministry for 40 years and the passages that are being used to, to demand that the Bible can't change are being misapplied. It's very easy to see, too. So the church oh, is operating on fumes. They're operating in such a level of naivete and reckless discernment that it boggles our mind. The, the blindness of the church leaders is more of a phenomenon than the phenomenon itself. Wow. Okay, hang on a sec. we gotta, we got to slow down a bit. Can you repeat that part for everybody? The, the the part about right after you mentioned, you know, the Mandela effect and what you, you, you described what's happening with not only with the changes, but they're affecting things in a way. You mean the Mandela effect changes in the Bible? Like you, you mentioned, I want you to repeat that sentence because it's like the most prevalent uh, oh, part about yeah. it. Yeah, well, the problem with the idea that the Bible's changing is that there's certain passages that seem to teach that it couldn't change so oh you know, okay jesus said you know um not one jot or tittle will pass from the law until all is fulfilled well he says in that passage that's matthew 5 18 i didn't come to abolish the law i came to fulfill it well he came which means it's fulfilled which means that that passage matthew 5 18 actually supports our position because now that it's fulfilled it says heaven and earth will heaven and earth will pass away but my but the law will not pass until all is fulfilled. Well, guess what? He just told you it was fulfilled. That means the jot and tittle now can pass away. And then it okay. says that, you know, Psalms 12, thy word is preserved. Well, where is it preserved? It's Psalms 119. Thy word is preserved in heaven. It's forever settled in heaven. That Bible verse is the one that's used to beat us over the head, telling us the Bible can't change. And it actually says the opposite. It says that the Bible isn't preserved in the book. It's preserved in heaven. So what God told all of his patriarchs is settled. It is still in effect, and it won't change. But the fact that God's allowing the Bible to become inaccessible doesn't change. 
the fact of what he said is going to happen, but those pro those Bible verses aren't promises that the Bible won't change. It's just the promise that God's word won't change. Right, right. They're not the same. The scripture and the word do not mean the same thing. So the passages that are being used to try to tell us that the scriptures won't change are actually saying the word won't change, and they're not the same. Okay, and then are there is there anything special about that? Like, have you analyzed the scriptures that are changing? Is there any trends or any kind of like weird meaning with those changes, or are they just insignificant changes? Oh no, they're the, <laughs> they're very significant, and there there are uh, a lot of passages that are wildly unfamiliar, like. Let's do a couple fill-in-the-blanks ones. Judge not, blank he be judged. Everybody knows that one. Lest judge ye, not. Lest ye? Yeah, say the whole thing. Judge not. Judge not, lest ye be judged. Thank you. And for and 40 even, years. I shouldn't right, even know that. Though. 40 years of being in the streets of New York for 10 years in full-time ministry and another 20 years in lay ministry, everybody saint and sinner alike knows that passage. Well, guess what? It's never existed. <laughs> It never existed in written scripture? It doesn't exist in any translation of the Bible, and especially the King James. What it says in the King James is, judge not that ye be not judged. Okay, that's a great example. Is there another one? We'll play. Yep, I'll give you another one. It's really familiar. We'll see if Darren can fill in the next one. All right, oh, yeah, so this is... All, but I probably know the fake ones, so... No, you you'll get this one. This one's a simple one too. Jo uh, this is Job, and and his wife's haranguing him, and he's like, the wife's like, curse God and die. And he's like, should we not receive good and evil from the Lord? He says, the Lord blanks, and the Lord blanks away. God's giving. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Thank you, thank you. Field goal. Jordan <laughs> fades back. Swish. <laughs> Okay, here's what my problem is with the idea that the Bible can't change. I can go in and do, not with just you guys, I can do this with pastors. I've done it with 30 of them. You just said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Is that correct? It's, it is correct. That's, that's what that's you what said. said. Yep, that's what he right, said. So, and that's what I would have answered too. I mean, that's... Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, that scripture has never existed in the King James Bible. That's I'm going to quote you... I'm going to quote you what has been in the, is in the 1611 Cambridge. It's in your grandmother's Gutenberg. Okay. You ready? Yeah. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. So, and so you've gone to old King, King James, like versions, even like you've looked at like yeah. different, different, obviously different revisions of it and stuff. Of and it's just, of course, right. Just to make sure people understand that you're not just saying that, that because you're looking at yours that you have at home. I mean, this is research has been done and nobody can find it right. In any kind of ver Bible. The last seven years of my life full time. <laughs> I just well, did well, I ask you about one then, because there's one that the, uh, that a lot of the, um, you know, the manifesting and that sort of community, the Napoleon Hill stuff comes from that. Uh, to those that have more should be given. Now I'm paraphrasing here because I'm not a Bible guy. I'm an Indian. I'm just a simple Indian. Um, yeah. But it's to those who have it, more should be given. And to those who don't, everything should be taken or something like That's that. All right. Yeah. People got it right. So is what? What's the is that one right, or what's the original of that? I don't know. I'd have to <laughs> have to look it up and see if it's changed because there's so many that are changing. There is I a mean, lot that are changing. Like you're coming across this more and more. Oh yeah, I've got lists of changes that I could read for you. <laughs> That's crazy. And the problem is, the problem is they're not just unfamiliar. There's now many that are biblical paradoxes. So in Leviticus twelve eight, uh, God gives permission to sacrifice turtles to God, not sheep or, or doves, turtles, reptiles. And then Mark, Mark 8, 23, Jesus is spitting in a guy's face to heal him. Now, we're all familiar with the passage where Jesus mixes his spit with mud and heals the blind man. And that's still in the Bible. Now, in another gospel, though, you have an example in Mark 8, 23. It says, and he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. Well, no. Okay. No, a thousand times no. 
I've been in the Bible for four decades. My Bible never had an example of Jesus spitting in a guy's face to heal him. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11.8, Paul says, I robbed other churches. And see, what happens when I start listing these is people will come back to me and say, well, I can explain what that means, John. But it's irrelevant, okay? Because if you woke up tomorrow and Darren, your name is Danny, and Graham, your name is Gary, right? And then, and you're totally freaked out, right? Because you know what your name is, for the love of heaven. And you're like, all your bank statements say Danny. Everybody knows you as Danny. Your license says Danny. And you're like, I don't care what the data sphere is telling me. I, I know my name, okay? That's certainty. All right? So when I, I'm telling you, uh, when the Bible says that, uh, you know, there was two men in a bed now and two women grinding, there's men breastfeeding in the Bible. Uh, you can sacrifice female sheep. There's female angels in the Bible. Uh, you know, these things were never in my Bible. So even though they're extremely uh, like biblical paradoxes, uh, you know, this one is a biblical paradox. Isaiah 36.10. But Rabshakeh said, Hath my sister sent me to the master and to thee to speak these words? Hath he not sent me to them, to the men that sit upon the wall? that they may eat their own dung and drink their own piss. <laughs> okay, now I'm, I'm, I'm coming from a, a, a world of corruption. When I was 23, I'd already relived three lives, okay? I was the biggest drug dealer in high school. Both my parents were alcoholics. I had no, no restraint. And so when I got born again, I was triggered by stuff like that. If that was in my Bible, I read through the Bible 15 times back to back in 10 years. I used to study the Bible four or five hours a day for 10 years. Plus, I was in four services a week. Never missed one because I was playing in it. So there's no way. These were not in our Bibles. It's changed. Well, I'm sorry. The one about eating dung. I mean, so what, what do you think that one was originally then? Well, some of these passages have been altered, while other ones have been added altogether. Oh, I see. Wow, that's fascinating. I think what's so hard for people, I mean, I might as well just jump into this because, you know, unless you got some other good examples, but I think what's so hard for people to imagine is it's either, it's either like either way you look at it, it's, it seems impossible, right? They either, they're either fucking with our collective memory or our collective consciousness or like what we're tied into all together, or all these things are physically being changed out from under us. Like either or way. Or they're not physical. Or what? Or they're not physical. You know what I mean, though. There's a Bible yeah, yeah, in your no. drawer. There's a Bible in your drawer that doesn't. That gets back to the thing we talk about from like episode five, where it's all just nothing. You know, the table's nothing. It's all ninety nine point nine percent nothing. So what do you really got change? The change, but this makes Berenstein Bears seem seem fucking kind of ah, right kind of silly. You know, <laughs> because I was, you know, I just assume it's my own ignorance on Berenstein Bears. I'm just an idiot. You know, I just, you know, I smoke a lot of weed. You know, I had a party phase. I just misremember the Berenstein Bears. I should ask mom about that. Mom, are you listening? What do you remember? Because now it's Berenstein Bears, but you know, this Bible stuff has a lot more serious implications, which it doesn't no make sense. doubt. That's like it's changing things in the in the real time. Now I might have disrailed the question there. What was the question? Oh, my question was how it physically happens. Like it's either either way, it's 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 oh uh, yeah, it's simulation. I think. Well, that's a mind this better because the real world. This is the like above or the, this is the above, not the below. Or so they're something. just making an edit. They're just making an edit in the program, and, and then it translates to all the physical. Well, there's also the, the fucking. So I go back and forth on this because, like, I think that the court of public opinion is important for a lot of reasons. You know, they're not just tricking us to steal our money it goes deeper than that they need to manipulate a certain amount of us because i think you can control reality i mean i i think that i have directly affected my reality you know not in just the, the normal ways either right obviously you do this you do that you're going to affect your reality you know if you shave you're going to not have a beard but you know, I also think you can manifest and visualize and picture, and I've got some real evidence where I've where I've done that in my life. Yeah, 
And uh, I think you can do that on mass. You can do that. You can actually control the direction because I can't. I can't manifest Graham to go bald. You know, I mean that seems to happen on its own, but I'm not manifesting it. And I don't think Graham could manifest me to go bald. And I can't manifest myself to fly because that I've got this bubble that I can influence. You know, maybe it's like a sphere. I can influence this sphere. I can influence my income and the different things I can put into the world and the different things I can bring into my sphere. But I can't go flying because that would, you know, involve all of your spheres would have to agree that I'm flying. And I think when they get on the TV and all this stuff, they can get all these spheres, all of our individual spheres, or at least enough of them to fucking change reality in the direction that they want it to change. And I don't just mean starting their wars. They're doing all that too. But I mean, actually maybe fundamentally changing reality, doing some of the things that you're sure. talking about. Oh, two slit experiment. Two slit experiment backs up everything you just said. And for those who might not be aware of it, you probably all your subscribers are aware of what the two slit experiment was. It was a peer reviewed study where they, they shot particles of uh, protons through a, um, a two slits. And then there was a photo cell on the backside that would light up when the protons would hit. So it would create two lines as the protons go through the two slits. Well, they flicked on a camera and suddenly the photo cell was displaying what would be a wave pattern where you have like two pebbles in a pond would have cancellation. So it got like six or seven lines. They turned off the camera and it went back to two lines. They turned on the camera and went back to seven lines. So simple human awareness or consciousness on the, at the quantum level changed how the, uh, the uh, construct was functioning. So everything that Darren just said is confirmed that, that our, consciousness interacts with the construct so somehow the bad guys have figured out how to essentially do alchemy like that on a planetary scale yeah and changing the bibles makes sense because that's how they've been doing it up until now i mean up until now they didn't have tv hollywood netflix mm -hmm. they didn't have all these things but they had this fucking book yeah i mean before that i don't it seems to me that the bible the coming of Christ, all that, because you know, you read these old accounts of when when England is coming up, and it's very clearly coming up in the ruins of something. But the one thing that is happening is this word of God is starting to spread all around the world. This very specific Bible that seems to be this very, you know, the, the early attempt to get everyone in the world thinking the same way with the same thing, the same that, so that they can maybe push this thing in the same direction. And, uh, I mean, you see them going to these different places and, and forcibly doing it to the, to the indigenous communities there because it seems to be that important. We're told today that it's because they were just trying to heal these healthy savages or blah, blah, blah. And they, maybe it was that, you know? But it could also be that the people at the fucking top knew exactly what they were doing. We need to get their fucking influence pointed in our direction before the, I don't know, the Muslims, the this, the that, whatever other, because I think the same thing where you got these different sects at the top trying to control things. I just think they're trying to do it on an extremely metaphysical level. That's why there's a fight for Hollywood versus mm -hmm. this versus that, where you still have these Joe Rogans and these Russell bands that seem to be okay, even though they're saying things that are so completely counter to the narrative that would seem to make no sense for those guys, but it makes sense for some other motherfuckers yep. who are trying to do their thing. Mm-hmm. No doubt. I'm gonna let Graham jump in on that. Well, geez, I don't know how to follow that one up. I mean, I did have something to say about it. I did, well, you know, okay, so it, it seems like uh to me, it seems like they want to make sure that we don't we don't have our own power. They want to take away our personal human power, but that's kind of an anti, in some ways that might be anti-church or anti-Christian, but I mean, I feel like that's been happening in the last couple hundred years at least, but maybe it goes back further to when Darren's talking about it, that they, you know, the. Well, it would make sense on why they need to change it now because they did everything sort of advanced to the next level. Now those old, that old shit don't work no more. And they, they probably, I don't know, maybe they can't change it too fast. You know, maybe there's, I mean, people are already noticing. Is that like, 
is that an evidence of them trying to make changes too quickly because yeah. things are escalating too fast? Whereas up until now, they've been it, able it to. It hasn't been noticed. Yeah, like up until now, you could change the Bible every fucking 10, 20, 30 years, right? Up until the last hundred, and probably nobody would ever fucking notice. Because, you know, I guess people like you would notice. Well, sure. Yeah, yeah. Because you mean, would I'm, never know 150 years ago, you would never know if the Bible you're reading is the same as dudes up the street. You would never know if his changed. Yeah, the level of the scholastic level among the uh, rank and file was pretty low back in the. I mean, the first Bible was printed in English in 1535. So I don't know what they did before that. Right, right. So when then was it just like they just tell you what was up and that was it up until then? It was just sort of, yeah. The Catholic Church pretty much disseminated out the God stuff and everybody just followed them because it was all in Latin. It's not like because. And I'm not saying I'm I'm a I'm a God guy, man, or at least a higher power guy, or something's going on. You know, I'm not an atheist, but uh, I mean, it does just seem like the perfect way to take over the place. You know, for the perfect way for some people who didn't have any power to slowly mm -hmm. amass power, integrate into everything, everywhere. It doesn't matter if you're a government or a king or a you know, or whatever the fucking other people have over there, an emperor, you know, but we can get this fucking into there on the time. And then all of a sudden, the only people who know the word of God are the priests. So you're slowly controlling. Oh, that. yeah. Yeah. This is an atom bomb. I mean, this is this is the most destabilizing thing that has happened in the church age since Jesus showed up. But I noticed on your uh, uh, YouTube channel, I think you had Cliff High, I think. Uh, yeah, back, yeah. Back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so Cliff, see a lot of people getting back to how is this happening. Uh, I followed Cliff. I actually bought his things when he was pointing his uh, spider at the cryptos because, you know, he was I, – I watched him from the beginning. He predicted things like there was going to be a, a lake in Peru would empty out overnight. That was a prediction. And then like three months later, a lake in Peru emptied out overnight. And I watched him do two or three things like that. So when he pointed his thing at cryptos, I signed up for that thing. But um, uh, he pointed his thing. For those who don't know, he created this spider to go out on the internet. He's a programmer and a linguist. And he programmed with all these really intense algorithms to listen to what people were talking about. And he believed that, he, well, he found out that humans are minorly clairvoyant. And they were predicting the future. And his, the, the returns were showing these predictions. And then they started happening. Well. He pointed this spider at the Mandela effect, okay? And specifically, he focused it in and around where these D-Wave computers were located, like Google has one, Columbia has one, and, and, and what he found was really compelling. And it made me really believe that the D-Wave is part of this thing. Wow. Because what, what he found was that there was a higher concentration of people reporting Mandela effects in and around the where the d waves were geographically located it was extremely conclusive okay and then if you he explains because he's like his iq is off the charts man this guy is such does a that mean that the d waves are generating reality bro listen to what he said he said he explained how the qubit works so this qubit is a technology we believe given to man by the fallen angels and jordy rose on a ted talk said uh, that that it operates in a multi-dimensional because the quantum level is another dimension, right? So what he said was we deposit what he called the product into another dimension, and then we receive the the. Uh, <laughs> ra ra it was so bizarre, man. And and they like would program this thing for things that would take a super cray computer like a year to calculate. This thing does it in three seconds. I mean, it's like off the charts what this thing can do. It can't do everything. It, it's really good at logistics and stuff like that. So anyway, he explained that the qubit would get triggered if people walked by it. So they had to figure out how to isolate it from any human interaction, like with the two-slit experiment, okay? There, there could be no human consciousness near it. So they put it into a tube, and they bring it down to zero, close to zero Kelvin, 
But then they found if they, you have to have a regular computer that programs the D-Wave. And if they did that, the human intent was being transmitted to it. It wouldn't work. So they had to create this like, this like elaborate, like daisy chain where it would push air and a ball would go down a thing and it would drop. And it would, it was so bizarre because it had to be totally disconnected from any human intent and then it would work. Um, and so what he proved to my opinion is that this D wave is basically a human consciousness vacuum in, in space time. There's no human consciousness in this qubit while it's operating and so that thing is opening up a portal to a, the, another dimension, right? Because that's what Morty wrote. It, and if we look at it, it changes to a wave and it fucking fucks it up, basically. Who knows? I mean, with this level of stuff. And see, see what um, what they said in, a, in, in the, uh, CERN, the, the head science guy for CERN in a French magazine was interviewed. And he said, we, we are attempting to open a portal. This is the CERN guy now. And we're and something may we may send something through it or something may come through it. Yeah, that's crazy. And and this is a, I I think I remember hearing that quote. I mean I mean and no wonder why people have conspiracies nuts. over CERN. You know, after all Wait, that, what's and that? Then the world went nuts. It's like demons got out, dude. Like, bro, do you, you know? Do you know that that was July? That. I, I, I think it was first, 2016. It wasn't Higgs boson. When was the Higgs boson? What was the well, first crazy thing they did? Because 20, shit used to really come off the rails know. around 2016. I don't exactly. know. Exactly. It was July happened. of 2016 was when they turned up CERN to full power for the first time. And if you anybody could do this, go to Google Analytics, put in Mandela Effect, and that's exactly when Mandela Effect searches went straight up. July oh, 2017. Shit. It's What's that, that old. It's that old. Yes. Wow. But the correlation is is you can't you can't argue, man. That was totally correlated. There was there was like no basically no searches, and the same month and year that CERN turned up their collider to full power, that's when Mandela effect searches went through the roof. Well, the, and the weird podcast. That's like the day the podcast started. I mean, no, 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 no. Twenty sixteen. You're talking. Oh, about, I thought you said twenty thirteen. No, twenty twelve. No, twenty sixteen. Which is interesting because yeah, that's, that's when, when I that's think when the broke. whole what? That's when it broke for us, you know. Like that's when like the audience split in half. That's when yeah, like everything the whole started. Culture wars, weird. Culture yeah. wars started. <laughs> and when we got drug into politics, kicking and screaming because we were trying to avoid it, and all of a sudden it seemed to become unavoidable. Mm. Yeah, it's so interesting how that also happened. Right, there was a huge culture split as well. Why do I think CERN was way before that? Then, well, no, the Higgs boson was, I think, was before that. That was 2011 or 2012, I think. Wasn't the Higgs boson from CERN though? Yeah, uh, yeah I think so. But he's talking about when they put put it up to full power, or when they made it bigger or something, right? Well, Higgs boson is supposedly the matrix which is at the quantum level that gives us. The perception that things have solidity. So again, it's sort of like the two slit experiment. <laughs> uh, the table that I'm leaning against is holding my arm up, and it appears solid, but it's actually uh, completely vacuous. It's just an energy construct. I'm in a video game, but to me, it's a solid. You know, you know, you get hit with a bat, you're going to feel it. But somehow, Higgs boson is the construct that gives what is basically a collection of uh, uh, frequencies that's what what uh electrons are at the quantum level they're octaves they're vibrations but it that's really, all it is but it really reinforces like what you said about the portal and about having to to do it it's a vacuum from consciousness because it, that that just proves what darren is saying about manifesting like our, absolutely our thoughts and our consciousness mean so much because in order for them to do this kind of thing they have to make sure it's separated and you can't just put it in a faraday cage because we get through that no problem yeah right. Higgs boson was discovered july 4th 2012 yeah fireworks baby yeah well this is this is really wiggy if revelation 9 it says, and they had as a king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in the Greek, his name is Apollyon. Well, it turns out that CERN is built on an old Greek uh, temple to, guess who? Apo Apollonius. Apollo, yeah, Apollonius. 
Now that is no coincidence, bro. No way. What about if Apollo is going to the moon? Well, they always name stuff after the Greek gods because that's just uh, made yeah, over fallen angels. The moon. What's that? I mean, you wrote the book on conspiracies. Did they Who did? The moon, John? You did. Well, no. See, my book isn't really to convince people conspiracies are happening. Okay, okay, okay. So let's. You're new, I guess. Actually, you're kind of new. You're even a little. Well, no, little it's new. not that. I'm I'm all in, but it's just that my book is for people that are already conspiracy theorists, and their spouse and their friends aren't. And uh, you're walking through a crap storm that would grind anybody to powder. I'm 60 years old, and I live in an apartment. My family lives in a half million dollar home 10 minutes from here, and they're at the beach right now. <laughs> having fun fun seasons in the sun and i am a pariah in my own home because <laughs> i refuse to shut up now the last two years i was with them i didn't say boo i was just happy dad hair nails fun fun seasons in the sun and nothing i never said anything negative or controversial right because that's what they required of me but it didn't work because i was still a nut job to them basically my kids think that i was tricked by photoshop tricks and then I'm a, a weak-minded boob, and then I, I, I chose those stupid, fake things over them so they're offended. And my wife told me, I begged her three months ago, I said, honey, I love you. This is madness. I want to be married to you. She said, I don't want to be married to you. We're in two different worlds. That's so, terrible to hear. I hope, you know, do you think she's ever going to come into our world? I mean, people. Well, I'm, whole, I'm not I'm not going after anybody else for that reason, because, you know, I, I certainly am uh, lonely, but uh, uh, it's raining red pills. Right. And I'm hoping maybe I mean, like all of my life, they've been telling me that the aliens were fake. Well, now they're having Senate hearings and these really official sounded dudes are rolling up. They're like, yeah, we're in possession of organics. And the congressman is like, you mean human remains? He's like, no. And then we have, we, they said they have off-world technology. So we, we're in full soft disclosure right now. <laughs> and so they're like, just la di da di da They're just, just doing life, man. And I can't, I started telling my wife, I said, honey, I got off the bus, okay? I can't do life like we've been doing it. Because I woke up in the Truman Show. And, and imagine if Truman woke up, you know, he finds out his fiance is an actress. And then he's in a TV studio. And then the next day, he just goes back to work. You can't do it. You're screwed. You're totally toast for this world. Is there something it, different about us and, and, and the normies? Like something like deep, something huge? Or is it just a matter of like maybe it can, it's, just, it's a random thing. Somebody can get that little first little bit that wakes them up. Because what happens, it, it seems to me like your book is, is really probably very – relevant to this is that when I know people that they trust me, they listen to me on all these other things, but they won't listen yep. to the facts about this stuff. Nope. So they, they know they have the ability to see it. So they know it and they believe me even, but they won't go there. Right. Right. So this is the thing they'll ever sort of wake up because they've already had that. They've already been given the opportunity. Bro, you totally nailed it. That was a perfect, description of the struggle that we're in because what you find is they don't know and they don't want to know which creates an impasse in the relationship and so once you escalate i talked about level one and level two rejection well level three if you persist is you're given what i call shut up or else orders this right. is when you're given an ultimatum if you talk about crazy things i can't have a relationship with you my daughter told me that. My wife told me that. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that I'm basically put into an eternal timeout where I have to remain silent about everything that I believe that's important and true for the rest of my life if I want to be in your life. Well, that's, that's uh, it's, it's unprecedented. I mean, I wouldn't do that to you. And, and you know, what never happens is the truther, <laughs> listen to this, and anybody listen to my voice over this podcast will relate to this. Have you ever gone to your friends, family, and said, if you don't talk to me about these crazy things, I can't have a relationship with you? No. No. We don't do that, okay? But they do that to us. We are given the ultimatums. Why? Because of what you're talking about. They're totally freaked out by the fact that their worldview is being challenged, and they don't want their happy life interrupted. 
It's yeah, pride. I've had, people, I've had it's, people say that to me. Like I've had people say that exact thing. Like I don't want to go there. No, I, no. You're probably telling the truth. You're probably right, but I just can't go there because I can't. I won't be able to sleep at night, or I can't. I can't accept that it's that sort of upside down in a way. It's cowardice, man. It's just straight up cowardice. I, yeah, I agree. I think so too. Well, cowardice is running rampant in 2023. You know, it's like clearly running rampant. Yep. It's like you can see people just like taking the easy way out all over the place. Just when it's like the hard way out isn't even that hard. It's just saying what you feel, just saying what you actually think. Just, you know, being yourself for a half a fucking second. But I'm like, I kept saying, you know, I kept saying when the, uh, I said, look, the weirdness is coming. Okay. The things that I'm telling you are operating under the surface, but when they pop up, you're not going to be ready. That was my mantra. Well, guess what? Look at all the people that lined up for the voodoo juice. They all lined up for the pixie dust and they're dropping like flies and we're vindicated. Totally. Oh yeah. Well, Graham and I were saying in 2014, well, maybe not 2014, but in 2015, for sure, we were having people on that were saying they're going to fucking mandate vaccines for the whole planet. You're going to need them to move around. This is, you know, if Del Big Tree was so far out in front of this, it's fucking crazy. Somehow. Totally. Totally. And they're so, trying to do it again. They're trying to do another rollout right now. See, so yeah, I'm lucky. My family, you know, my kids don't have their childhood vaccines. My new, uh, my new lady, you know, we're, we're down the rabbit hole together so it's all good but nice so i get how old are your kids like did they get vaccinated like no fortunately my my wife was awake enough not to do it and i i there was some well, i don't mean the, just the covid ones like what about the childhood ones were you still in the matrix for those because you must know by now that those are all fun all they're all i mean we did like i was just waking up and i think we did like one round and they wanted to put four shots into my kids i was like no you could do one that was it so i was awake up, and then after that one shot we stopped all together because it's all voodoo juice i mean there's technology that's valid but i don't trust the medical industry as far as i can throw them man it seems crazy that she would like be okay with that but can't realize that everything else is crazy it's like they're poisoning our kids like i mean isn't that like the are we already out at the end of the dock it's just it's the happy life. I'm telling you, man, it's they want their happy life. It's, you know, like there was all this conflict around the landscaping, like Saturday. Do I would do the honey do list, but um, I can't be all invested in the landscaping and going bowling and the next play date and the next trip. And when when we're at war with with humanity is at war with psycho like like super villains. <laughs> like Dr. Evil, right? Klaus Schwab is Dr. Evil. Joseph Mengele's last name is Fauci. Okay, these people are mass. Bill, Billy Gates of hell is a psycho. You you watch him interviewed and he's talking about the next, the next um, uh, pandemic. Pandemic. And he's giggling. And he's talking about all the people that'll die. And he's giggling. Okay. And, and you're starting to see this stuff. You're waking up and you're like, damn, this is like really happening. And you're like freaked out. And then you're going to your spouse and your children and your friends and you're saying, you know, this is really happening. And they just want to go bowling. Or how about Bill Gates just saying flat out that he's going to use vaccines to fix the overpopulation problem? Yeah, yeah, I they mean, don't hide it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> or or when, when he talks about the little kids, we take these genetic modified organisms and we just jab them right in the arm. We just oh, yeah. jab them into the arm. Yeah, this sort of like the pretense is going out the window. It's like the, the velvet glove of tyranny has come off, man. They're just, they're just in your face now with the tyranny. And so they figure... But so is, is that because there's no, that be, that there's got to be in response to there being more of us than there ever has, right? I mean, they've got to just... All you can do to fucking... If the fucking chickens keep getting out of the coop, you got to keep fortifying the coop, you know? There's a guy I got the, on my bookshelf. He's called the o Super Class. He was with Kissinger as an aide, and he was so he was in and around all of the elite, like in Bilderberg and stuff. And he wrote a book called Super Class. He said there's like 2,000 of them altogether. 2,000 of them at that level. And then above that, you know, it's the group of 300, Club of Rome, whatever. I mean, 
there's say eight billion of us, but we're all just sheep. You know, we're just lemmings. I, I, I want to go back to that Bible thing just a bit here because did you did you see any like you've been looking at all these changes and some of the main Mandela ones? Like, do you see it, uh, any trends or like do you see a theme about the the change? Like, if you were the one that was making these changes, would there be like a you know it's an an overall revision a revision for the Bible and humanity? Is it is it saying something? Is there a message there with these changes? Definitely, yeah. Oh, I get an echo. Did you hear that? No. Am I no. okay? No, we're seeing themes that are um, that are that are uh, ungodly. They they have the LBGT theme where you have two men in a bed and two men in grinding, two women grinding, and and it's in the same verse. It then says two men in a field and two women grinding grain. So that first part was added. No, it was never in my Bible. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. I've got millions of people that say it wasn't. You got hundreds of millions. I'm sorry. Our testimony is true, and it's it's not. It wasn't in there. Interesting. Okay. And what yeah. what that means is the LGBT theologians are now writing articles saying, "See, you can be gay and go to heaven because the <laughs> two guys are in the bed together, and one gets raptured." And then you have. Um, you know, in, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 13, it now says that Jesus has a gird about his paps, which is the word mastos, which is female breasts. Stethos is the word for male breasts. So you have a, a depiction of Jesus as Baphomet, basically, of half man, half woman. And then you've got all kinds of sexual innuendo that was never in there. Oh, that's so fascinating. So it, it really does feel like it's the the satanic sort of Maoist or or like you said, that sort of Luciferian. I don't even know if it would be Luciferian, but something that seems like there's some influence there that sort of matches our cultural changes right now. Right. And for anybody that's listening, you could go to my website, wakeuporelse.com, go to the resources tab and download the Bible quiz and then go test this out for yourself. Go to t five or six pastors and say, hey, pastor, is there any mention anywhere in the Bible about sacrificing female sheep? I guarantee you, all of them will say no. That's their memory. No, it doesn't say female sheep. Leviticus 4.32, if he brings a lamb as a sin offering, he shall bring a female without blemish. The Bible is supernaturally changing to fulfill end times prophecy. Your doctrine is wrong. The Bible doesn't teach it can't change. It actually teaches the opposite. Daniel 7.25 says the Antichrist will seek to change times and laws. That okay. word laws is translated in Ezra 7 as the law of God. So it literally says he will seek to change space-time and the Bible, because that word is not calendars, it's time. I was just going to ask you about the Antichrist. Like, the, yeah. <clears throat> what, what's your feeling about that and, and any other predictions? Wait, for, let me give you one more yeah, thing yeah. on the, and before I answer the Antichrist. Ezekiel, who was a patriarch in the Bible, his, his writings are quoted in Jude. So this guy's no joke, okay? And, and so, in his, in, so his, in his book, which is, is canonized in the, Ethiopian Bible, chapter 80, verse 2. This is Enoch. He says, in that day, talk about this day, all things on the earth will alter and they will be out of their time. Nailed it. He described the Mandela effect to the bone right there. And then he goes on to say that the moon will be out of its order. And now we're seeing the crescent on the bottom. Have you guys seen that? The moon, I've heard people talking about it. Yeah. Totally. I got pictures of it. I, from, I took it myself. The moon crescent is sometimes now showing up as like a, a bowl on the bottom, which if you go to the NASA website, it doesn't show that. It's on the sides. And then he also said in, in chapter 80, he says, and the fruits of the earth will be backwards. Go look at what a bunch of bananas looks like. They're growing up. The bananas are all pointing up now. So Enoch totally nailed it. He could, he totally described this event. I'm sorry. Sorry, there's no female sheep in the Bible. Well, there is. but And then Luke 18, it says, now they're bringing infants to Jesus to touch him. 
They never brought infants. That they brought children so that he could bless them. But now in Luke eighteen fifteen, they're bringing infants, Holy babies. Shit, bananas are growing up. Yes, they are, bro. They didn't always grow up, did they? How much way do bananas grow on the tree? I I don't know. I'm... When you look at them, you'll be like, no way. This is we getting really like crazy. crazy. We can look at them right now. Uh, uh, here we go. Oh yeah, bring them up on the screen. Excellent. Hey, these guys. Hey, you wait. The guy on your uh, on your desktop. Those are the uh, the guys. The Moais, yeah. The well, Moais. they got caps on their heads now. Did you see that? No. <laughs> Hold on. What? Go look up. Go get a couple pictures of those guys because now they have hats on. That does look weird with the bananas. Yeah, they are growing up. Yeah, that is very strange. Not uh, all of them have hats, but a bunch of them do. See if you can get a, a bigger... Click to uh, images, maybe, and see. I don't know. Yeah, click on images. Watch. You'll see in a second. You'll find them. There they are. Look, right there, right there. See those hats? Right just up, up and to the left. Yeah, that one. Those are hats, bro. <laughs> Oh, look, this one has a hat too. Yup. I wonder if they're all gonna have hats soon. It's totally happening. The banana thing is gnarly. I mean, I'm interested to hear what the audience thinks about this. Did bananas always grow up? Do you guys think bananas grow up? Uh, let us know what you think. I gotta say, uh, this has been fantastic, John. This is one of the best chats we've had a while, you know. We did, we have another podcast that uh, that isn't on YouTube and stuff that gets a lot lot. We have a second half for members only where we can get super controversial and call oh, things. Oh, that sounds like a blast! Yeah, I think after the way this has gone, we will have to get you back on that. I mean, an hour has flown by. I feel like we could do another another couple hours, no problem. No problem. But uh, tell us where can people find you? Can they follow you on any social media? Yes. What's the website? Where can they get the book? Yep. You can go to wakeuporelse.com and just click on get the book, or you can get it on Amazon. That's where it is. It's called The Conspiracy Theorist Survival Guide. And I have an audio version now, too. So it's on Audible and iTunes and on the on Amazon, so you can listen to it. And uh I'm on YouTube at Wake Up or Else, um, basically doing a biblical analysis of the Mandela effect. <clears throat> and we do live streams and, uh, you know, I post content because, uh, you know, this is definitely happening. And the church is totally 99% of the entire body of Christ either doesn't know it's happening or refuses to accept it, even when we show them all the evidence. Wow, that's fascinating. Yeah. Man, this has been fantastic. We'll have to get you on our other shows called Great. Please. Right it's called Great America Outlawed, and it's uh, it's it's not yeah it's it's we go to all the other platforms that uh, we don't nice. get canceled from and all that. This one's usually usually a little bit less uh, or more tame, but yep. uh, so yeah, we'll we'll have to get you on that one. This has been fantastic. Great guys, yeah, I, I knew this was going to be a great talk. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, no yeah, problem. everyone who's watching live is loving it, so we'll have to do this again for sure. John, I hope things uh, spin around for you and your family find some red pills. I will try and throw some out, keep throwing some extra ones out there in the hopes that people like this stumble upon them. I mean, I'm blessed that, you know, my kids don't believe any of that shit and neither does my missus. And, you know, I was neither does my mom or my sister. I was really insulated. Even Graham, yeah. like, Graham had to deal with it on my buddies, you know, just didn't come into my life at all. But, uh, right. you know, there's people out there that like yourself that are dealing with real repercussions. So my heart goes out to you. I hope they find some red pills and <laughs> uh, find their way home. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll have to do this again. John, you have yourself okay. a wonderful evening. Got it. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks, buddy. See ya. All right. Take care. And that was a chat with John Kerwin. What'd you think, buddy? I mean, man, I never heard of John, but this was fantastic. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was, that was great. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I gotta I'm gonna have to listen to his book now. I think this will be one of the first times like I think I've not read the book prior and had to read it after. <laughs> you know. But yeah, he's a he he thinks the moon landing's fake. He mentioned that at the very beginning. So I wanted to Oh yeah, I forgot yeah. to circle back to that. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, I I there's no way, man. There's no way they got off the moon the first time without a bunch of people dying. I don't care. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Um 
Yeah, big thanks to John for coming on the show. Big thanks to you guys for listening. Even bigger thanks if you're some of the few there that choose to support our work over at GreatAmerica.ca slash support. Sign up for a monthly, make a one-time donation if you can, when you can. Uh, contact at the cabin for the trips. We've got a great trip coming up in Vermeer, Canada. You don't need vaccines to get in right now, so now's the time. Uh, adultbrain.ca for the audiobooks. America Outlawed, as we talked about earlier in the episode for the other show. Spam Graham, GrahamAmerica.com. Other than that, we love you guys. Thanks for listening. And we will see you next week. Somehow I built a rocket ship Out of the stuff dreams are made And popsicle sticks Please look at my rocket ship schematics Tell me it can fly to the moon Tell me I'm not a lunatic Countdown, three, two, one, no hesitation.